I am Sean Hessinger, reporting for Small Business Trends from Zoholix 2024. And I'm here with Tejas Gadia, uh, who is an evangelist with Zoho. And we're going to talk about um, some of the things that have been happening with um, the technology as far as it applies to professional developers a little bit. Um, what can professional developers look for in, in, in the new enhancements on the Zoho platform? Yeah, good question. So generally speaking, for professional developers, a lot of what they're building usually ties into some other business app that they're using. Uh, and so one of the advantages that we have with the Zoho developer platform, in addition to the point products like CRM or help desk or whatever, is a lot of pre-built integrations, a lot less headache when it comes to compliance and security because it's all in the same frameworks and uh, platform. So productivity is ultimately the unlock that we go for. Every developer tool out there is trying to make people build faster and easier. Yeah. Uh, so we try to offer as many tools as we can to kind of round that whole thing out. Okay. Um, uh, custom app development is so important to, to, to businesses. I think uh, how do th how do these new enhancements how do these new enhancements uh, help us in that regard? Yeah. So the two biggest pieces of news is one around our Pro Code platform Catalyst, and the other one is a new app we've released called Aptics. Uh, both um, have been used internally for a very long time. That's generally how we do things. We'll create some technology, we'll use it internally, and then productize it over time. So I'll start with the Aptics one, because that's a little bit easier. Uh, somebody makes a mobile app, whether it's a web app or a native app of any kind, and you need to be able to, the developer needs to be able to track it, make sure it's working, what features are people using, is it crashing, whatever, like very basic monitoring. The problem with a lot of the monitoring solutions in the market right now is a lot of them are, I don't want to say shady, but uh, have questionable data practices, let's just call it. Uh, because most people are using it for like monetizing ads and conversions and stuff like that. For us, we try to make it privacy focused like everything else. Um, and then the second piece is for <coughs> marketers to be able to actually have a, a unified dashboard to be able to send messages out, manage app stores reviews, uh, track usage and key customers and if people opt into sharing their information. So kind of merging the ability to engage with their customers, both from a developer perspective and the marketer or uh, product manager, any non-technical person's perspective as well, all in the single platform. And mm -hmm. then the second piece of news is around Catalyst. And Catalyst is our Proco developer platform. Um, and so there we have a couple new services. One's called Signals, which is a, a really innovative way for us to receive any kind of action that happens in the Zoho ecosystem or third-party apps can be uh, triggering any kind of logic within uh, the Catalyst platform. So if you want to execute a function whenever a lead with a certain last name is created, it would happen instantaneously, no API calls, no nothing, just huh. cooked in right at the framework level. And then there's a few others around like some UI frameworks and some uh, CI/CD pipelines for uh, integration and testing and develop deployment. But uh, yeah, it's all about just adding more tools to the platform that are going to make people be able to develop things faster. Now I want to ask you uh, b b about a word that I heard cropping up again uh, a lot today and in, in press releases as well, pro code. Mm. What, what is pro code? What do we mean when we use that word? Yeah, uh, I don't really know if how it got popular. I think it's probably because there was a big rise of like no and low code. Right. And we needed something to say that it's not quite full stack development. You're still assisting in some way. So pro kind of is where it came from. But I'd call them more of a, I wouldn't call them like individual siloed buckets of products. The lines are kind of merging, and that's like the ideal scenario. Someone might start with a no-code solution, dragging and dropping some stuff. And most of the time, uh, you might just hit a wall. You want to create a certain workflow or a certain mm. user permission. It's just not, you're not going to have the drag and drop functionality there. So then you might have to recreate the whole thing in a low-code platform. But ideally, there would be a good migration pro uh, process since we make all the apps. It, it works pretty well that way. Uh, and then on the low-code side, maybe some scripts here and there, advanced logic. And then when you still need something even more for further advanced, you can go to the Catalyst piece. That would be like a natural progression. Um, but it's all about really picking the right tool for the right job. If I need to just track visitors at my office, maybe some no-code tool will get the job done. Mm. If for those visitors I need to verify their biometrics and create like an entire face scan and track their fingerprints and you know <laughs> store it securely, that might be a Catalyst solution that ties into the no-code solution. So it all just depends on which piece of the puzzle and what's the right tool. So it sounds like it's a sliding scale sort of from no code up to pro code yeah. type thing. Um, I wanted to also ask you about application teams, which we heard a lot about. And I don't know if there's a difference between that and a professional developer, but I'm wondering about application teams and how they might benefit from some of the developments uh, as opposed to professional uh, developers, if, if there's a difference. Uh, there's a little bit of a difference. I feel like... Uh it kind of just depends on the use case, I guess, that they're trying to build for. Uh, if it's application teams are building things internally, uh, sometimes the urgency isn't quite there. Maybe the prioritization isn't quite there. 
Um, the backlog is usually there for like an internal IT team or something along those lines. And then professional developers, it's about making their job easier by picking the right tool again for the right job. So rather than spinning up a uh, complex database and doing a bunch of like provisioning of servers and compute and all sorts of resources, can we just make this process a little bit easier by maybe some presets, maybe some no configuration options and let them get going a lot faster to really build the logic piece rather than like the operations piece of it. Uh, w now, w you talked about Catalyst before you were breaking down some of the processes, but what are the what are the newest parts of Catalyst? What are the things that are that are newest about it? Yeah, so, okay, so the newest is one thing called Signals, uh, which is the event-driven thing for any activity that happens in the Zoho world or third-party apps. Uh, the second piece is around uh, something called Slate. This is like a advanced way to host uh, UI frameworks like React and other ones that um, normally would just take a lot of headache to set up, really, and it just kind of makes it a one-click uh, situation for people. Uh, CI CD pipelines is a really big one. You used to be able to develop solutions in Catalyst, but then you'd have to use a third party tool to actually manage the um, development and deployment of it. So now it's baked into the platform directly. Um, and then there's a few others around like uh, API management, security, and stuff like that. But those are probably the highlights. Can you explain a little bit about the new application analytics that we were he hearing about and how it would be used, maybe in a very practical way, even maybe using an example for a, a, a business use? Yeah. Uh, I would say there's maybe the more I th all right I'll go back oftentimes we're talking about applications maybe it could be an internal application or it could be an external one maybe there's something that my field workers are using out and about and I want to be able to engage with them make sure the app that I made whether it's through catalyst or creator or any kind of tool or third-party tool I want to make sure that that internal app is working well communicate with them properly and all that kind of stuff if I'm building an app for the mass market uh, to sell or resell, that tool also needs to make sure it works properly. So logging, tracking, uh, crashes, feature usage, um, user journeys within the application, all that kind of stuff. Um, but it's the core is really around making sure that the privacy options are available for people to make sure that they're not being spied on and that information is not going elsewhere. Well, that leads into my uh, last question, which is can you explain how the da data security and, and privacy comes into play with, with, with analytics? I, I, more specifically, like maybe an example of, of, where, would, uh, of where privacy would apply, would apply here? Yeah, so um, there is an in insane amount of ways that you can be tracked on mobile apps. Mm -hmm. uh, on your browser, maybe you have like an ad block or something, you can find out maybe disable JavaScript and find a way to like prevent some tracking of you. In a mobile app, it's a black box. You have no idea what tracking is happening behind the scene, what SDKs are baked in. And so in this case, um, it d I mean, it depends on the, the developer's maybe business model. Some would require a little bit more tracking, which is perfectly fine. We offer the option as well. But for some, there's no option but, uh, but to use a tracking solution. So for us, if you have a normal B2B app and we're putting it out in the marketplace, I don't need to track my users. So to find a tool that doesn't track their users is actually kind of difficult. So we want to just make sure we provide op options for both. Okay. Well, uh, thanks again to uh, Teja Scadia, um, our evangelist at Zoho, and uh, this is Sean Hessinger reporting from Zoholics 2024.